Greetings Troopers, welcome to the Imperial Academy. This is the second video in a series of videos informing you about the Star Wars galaxy and how the many aspects within it are affected by the presence of Palpatine's Galactic Empire. Today we'll be looking at the ancient orders of force users known as Jedi and Sidari, or Jedi and Sith in modern terms. We will be delving into their rich history which spanned thousands of years and looking at the characteristics, ideals and features of these orders and seeing how they are affected by the Empire. But with that feel free to like and subscribe if you enjoy Empire content or just Star Wars content in general and maybe feel free to share this video with other like minded Star Wars fans to show your allegiance to the Empire. But without further ado, let's talk about the Jedi and the Sith. There is no emotion, there is peace, there is no ignorance, there is knowledge, there is no passion, there is serenity. There is no death, there is the force. Peace is a lie, there is only passion. Through passion I gain strength, through strength I gain power, through power I gain victory. Through victory my chains are broken, the force shall set me free. Those are the codes of the Jedi and Sith Order, which have persisted for thousands of years well before the days of the Republic. The Jedis are the protector of life and the force which flows through them. Meanwhile, the Sith seek to gain power to control or destroy, they bend the force to their will. Of course, it's no secret that the Jedi and Sith have a very long history of trying to one-up and destroy each other, with their influence and constant wars being prevalent in today's galaxy. So let's look at where this all started. The direct origin of the Jedi is unknown, but we do know that the Order's first temple was built on Ark 2, where younglings and Padawans were taught to use the Force which began a series of generational teaching over the course of decades which trained Force users to utilise the light side of the Force to protect those in need. The origins of the Sith is slightly more mysterious, as they got their start when an unknown rogue Jedi was exiled from the Order and managed to make their way to Moraband, which is a planet infused with dark side energy, and that was where the first Sith tapped into the dark side of the Force in a period known as the Hundred Year Darkness which was a period of time where the Sith grew as they gained followers and began a very long, bitter struggle between the Jedi and the Sith. Throughout this struggle, there have been countless wars and skirmishes sought between them, with an example being the Mandalorian and Sith War, in which the Jedi fought not only the Sith, but the Mandalorians in a violent struggle that resulted in the collapsing of the Old Republic. But nonetheless, the Jedi Order persevered against the infamous Crusader Mandalorian, led by Mandalore the Grey. This war left most of the planet of Mandalore in ruin as the Jedi managed to secure victory against the Crusaders, but the war was not over as it was the Sith that managed to cripple the Republic while the Jedi were occupied, nearly destroying it. But once again the Jedi Order's persevered managed to grant them victory against the Sith and established the Great Peace, which lasted many decades and saw the Sith on the verge of extinction, or at least that's what they thought. So with that, let's talk about the characteristics of the Jedi and the Sith. Now with that, I will assume you understand the major and minor differences between these two ideologies and what their beliefs are. The Jedi of course being the protectors of peace, justice and prosperity within the galaxy, protecting the citizens and planets from outside harm such as opposing armies, the Sith, terrorism, crime and much more. Meanwhile, the Sith seek to destroy and gain power to control the beings of the galaxy. The Jedi on the other hand, they followed a hierarchical structure in which force sensitive younglings were brought into the Jedi Order by a seeker whose job it is to search the galaxy for force sensitive children and induct him into the Order at a very young age where they begin their training on the path to enlightenment and the light side of the force. A Jedi's ascension through the ranks of the Order starts at youngling, which is the rank where force sensitive children are taught the very basics of tapping into the force and utilising a lightsaber. This is also the period where they go to the now Imperial occupied Ilum to get their kyber crystal for their lightsaber. After this they become a padawan, in which they are chosen by a Jedi Knight to be trained under them. After this, as decided by the initiate trials, they become a Jedi Knight. This signifies experience and aptitude within the light side of the force, and because of this they are able to have their own padawan, become a Jedi Master in which to get a seat on the Jedi Council, and maybe even become a Grand Master, which is a position for the oldest, wisest and most devoted member of the Jedi Order. On the Sith side of things, the process of becoming a Sith Lord was far more rigorous and brutal, as under the rule of two, young Force users were taken away from their home by Sith Lords who trained them through the power and potential of the dark side of the Force. These Sith apprentices were tormented and even tortured by their masters in order to get them to tap into their anger, rage and emotion so that they would hate their masters and the Jedi. At a certain age, the Darth title is granted by the Sith Master, along with the Sith name given to the Master by the Force itself. It is also during this time in a Sith Lord's life 
that the apprentice usually ends up killing his or her own master, or the master replacing their former apprentice with a new one which is much stronger. The path to Sifthood certainly seemed much simpler compared to the path of the Jedi and the light side of the Force, but you have to understand this. Following in the way of the Sith teachings is a quick way to obtain lots of power within the Force, but that power comes at a great cost. That cost could be anything from losing your humanity, making you a hollow husk that seeks nothing but power, your sanity, making you insane as the pursuit of the dark side twists your mind and your body, as your physical body can fall apart or be destroyed completely due to the sheer amount of dark side energy that gets stored within you. The path to the Jedi is about becoming one with the Force and allowing it to flow through you, as the Jedi learn to overcome the struggles of the dark side and the emotions which drive it. But with that, let's talk about how the Jedi and Sith are affected today by the Galactic Empire. It's no secret to any Imperial personnel that the Galactic Empire is run and managed by Sith Lords, with the most notable example being Palpatine. Galactic Emperor Sheev Palpatine has been at the forefront of the creation of the Empire for the past 30 years since his proclamation as Emperor. Palpatine's Sith title is known as Darth Sidious, as he was the one responsible for manipulating the Clone Wars and his favour from the Shadows. It is understood that a large amount of work and planning went into the Clone Wars by Sidious to generate distrust from the civilians against the Galactic Republic and more importantly, the Jedi. Sidious is a Sith Lord that you should consider very dangerous to be around and one that you should not fail if given direct orders from him, although that is rare. Other Sith Lords that assist Sidious in his endeavours would be the mysterious Darth Vader, who is known to be ruthless and unforgiving to his officers, usually executing them if they fail him. Vader is Sidious' apprentice and enforcer responsible for distilling fear within Imperial officers. He is a very dangerous Sith Lord to be around, as he is cunning and smart and able to outmatch his opponents, especially in his rage. Although, should you treat him with respect and succeed at orders given by him, well knowing your place compared to him, then he can be a rather effective and dare I say, comforting leader to be around. Other members of the Sith within the Empire would be the Inquisitors, who are responsible for hunting down and killing rogue Jedi that have escaped Order 66 and the multiple Jedi purges that occurred. Speaking of the Jedi, the effect the Empire has had on them has been drastic, with most of the Jedi Order being driven to near extinction by Order 66, all across the galaxy, hundreds of Jedi Masters, Padawans and Younglings were shot and killed by the clone troopers that they worked with for many months during the Clone War. Order 66 was the first major victory for the Sith in millennia, and it is unlikely that the Jedi and even the galaxy as a whole will be the same ever again, but who knows, the Force works in mysterious ways and will always find some way to balance itself out again, as it has done for the many thousands of years between the continual struggle of the Jedi and the Sith. Thanks for watching. Long live the Empire, and may the Force be with you.